Hello and a very warm welcome to the Total Energies BWF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals 2020. The World Championship for men's team and women's team. We are in beautiful Aarhus, second largest city in Denmark. The forest, the sea and the city meets in perfect harmony. Autumn can be a spectacular time of the year with the most awesome colours. We have participants from all corners of the globe, from Oceania to Asia to Europe, Pan America and of course Africa as well. Three sessions a day, morning, afternoon and evening. And this evening session we are going to focus on the tie in Group B between the 3-4 seed Denmark, the winner of the Thomas Cup in 2016. The tournament is played in four groups of four teams until Thursday next week. It's the group stages before we reach the sharp end of the tournament on next Friday, Saturday and Sunday. In today's match coming up, we will turn our attention to the Thomas Cup, a tournament dating back to 1949, it used to be played every three years but things since 1984 has been a biannual event. Indonesia has won an impressive 13 times, but not since 2002. Followed by defending champion China, who has won 10 times. So welcome to the 31st edition of the Thomas Cup. As you can see, we will focus and pay attention to the Thomas Cock tie in Group B between Denmark and France. And here we got the order of play, the lineup of the two teams. And the first singles, and Victor Axelsen, the Olympic champion, will take on Christo Popov, the European junior champion from 2020. Second match on, Anas Antons, the World Tour final champion, against Arno Merkel, European junior champion of 2018. Third match is the men's doubles, Mass Colling and Frederick Sogard is up against Fabian Delru and William Villiche. They are also European Junior Champions of 2018. Fourth match on, Rasmus Gemge in the men's singles, steadily improving against uh, the teenage sensation Alex Lanier, who is the European Junior Champion under 17 from 2021. Last and final match is the men's doubles, Kim Astrup and Arnos Rasmussen, winners of the China Open Super 1000 tournament against Christo Popov and his brother Toma Junior Popov and Toma Junior Popov also European Junior Champion in 2017. So what a very very fine view inside this wonderful stadium and uh, the first match coming up as we saw earlier, Victor Axelsen against Christo Popov in the first men's singles. There is no doubt that uh, Denmark seeded 3-4 in this tournament is a favourite to win against France, but one has to say and admit that France is doing really, really well on the junior level and are bringing one champion up after the next. And it will be very, very interesting to see how this young side from France 
and what they can do against the favourites from Denmark. But it is impressive that the players from France, all of them, are European junior champions in one specific year. We are, of course, waiting for our players to come onto court. the Olympic champion, Victor Axelsen, won the Tokyo Olympics just a few months back, or actually just, yeah, six, eight weeks ago, and he is, of course, massively popular here in Denmark. won the gold at the World Championship as well in 2017. And his opponent from France, Christo Popov, received Young Player of the Year award from uh, Badminton Europe in 2021. And he uh, won a silver at the World Junior Championship in 2019 and became European Junior Champion in 2020. On top of that, he has won the Italian International Challenge Tournament in 2019. And the head-to-head -head between these two players is the second time they play. The first time Victor Axelsen won in two straight games, 21-16, 21-12 in the European Mixed Championships. So the toss of the coin, Axelsen is winning, but it was not to be seen what he chose whether to take ends or choosing to serve or receive. But I can tell you that the conditions here in this stadium, in this hall, is very, very good. Not a lot of drift. And here we have Victor Axelsen, 27 years of age. He's a tall athlete. He's born in Uense. It's uh, where the Denmark Open is played in a few week's time and he's 194 centimeters tall he has been number fifth uh, number one on the world ranking for 51 weeks and last time was in september 2018 his opponent christo popov is just 19 years of age he's actually born in sofia in bulgaria and uh, Presently his ranking is 71 and is based on 17 tournaments. His best ever ranking is 67. He spent five weeks as number 67 on the world ranking. And a very promising young player. Our court officials, the umpire Pomaro, Layla of Indonesia and uh, the service judge is Jojen John of Bahrain. So we will soon start this game after the traditional two minutes of warm up. What a big difference between these two young players, or not young players, but two players from uh, these two countries. Uh, Christo Popov have won one international tournament 
on senior level where Axis and have won 20. But he is a very good player, Crystal Popoff, so not to be underestimated. And I'm very, very sure that Axison is going to stay very, very focused in this match. I think he's got a lot of respect for the young Frenchman. Spectators mostly are coming from big cheer for big taxes and a nice flicks over there from Popov. Now that's a strong start from uh, the young Frenchman. First, a very nice flick serve, and then that tight, tight net shot just clipped the top of the tape. This is obviously where Axelsen is extremely good. He's a tall athlete and he's using his height and reach very much to his advantage. Likes to be on the attack. And here we see it again. Porfok starting off with the smash easily. Play back this one here, nicely defended by Axelsen. And look at that smash. Penetrating the defence completely. And 2 1 up. There is no doubt that uh, Chris Gold pop off. To try to avoid to lift as much as possible. This is a lovely, lovely rally, really well played, constructive from both players. And that's going wide. I've seen Christo Popov play. He's a very, very good fighter with a strong, solid defence, good physical skills. And he likes these drawn out matches. But whether that's possible or not, time will tell whether Axelson can really stamp his authority on this match and uh, penetrate with his very strong attack. hitting as Axis and can't really get through the defence of Axis and have to work extremely hard in the rallies to score the points.
was uh, a very loose shot from Christo Popoff. He got away with it. That was an easy mistake. And Axelson still just to one point in it. And there we have the drive serve from Popoff. That's just. Ooh, I thought perhaps that was going wide of the sideline. But there's no challenge from Axelson, so surely it must have been in. Axelson looking at the service judge just to confirm whether that drive serve was uh, according to the rules. Popov forced the arrow from Axelsen with that cross court of the net. This one here, Axelsen pushing it long on the back line. Camp, the coach behind the big taxism. But Popov really has to work hard for his points. 5 4 up. suspect that we will see uh, Christoph Popov being uh, on the floor, diving or hand on the floor quite a lot that we already see here after such a short time that we need to get the court marked on several occasions. That's wide. Challenges straight away. It looks tight and close, but I fear for the young Frenchman that he is going to lose this challenge. And where I sit, he looks a little bit out, but uh, let's see what Hawkeye has got to say about that. Yes, it's indeed out. So, Good judgment from uh, the line judge. Taxes and not to show his fist against uh, his opponent. And here is a very fine example of how much easier it is for Axelson to score his points compared to the young Christopher Popoff of France. He's got to work a lot, lot harder for his points.
this is definitely working in favour of Axison. Ah, that's a nice save. Wonderful save there from Popov. Really great save behind the back. Well, actually, it only extended the rally even further. Here you saw that beautiful shot. Thirty-six shots. Close the gap here before the mid game interval. One or two more points would be very beneficial for him. Playing with a lot of patience, just waiting for the mistake from Popov. Yeah, massive support here in the crowd for Victor Axelsen. Christo Popov is born in Bulgaria. His father, Thomas Popov, played for the national team in Bulgaria and later on became a coach of the national team as well. And once again, Hand on the floor, Popov asking uh, the umpire to get uh, the floor mopped. Okay. Umpire saying, no, please use the shoes. Not to delay the match unnecessarily. Once again, the drive serve. And that's a beautiful, beautiful block shot from Popov. And well left on the back line. Well constructed rally. He needs Popov to find better angles, steeper angles, more disguise in his attacks. It's too easy for Axelsen to guess and anticipate where the shots are coming. And that's of course not something you can do overnight, it's something you have to do back in your training. Lovely spinning net shot from Popov. Closing the gap to two points, 10-12. Look at this, that's perfect.
uh, here was, I think, a fine example of what I was trying to mention earlier. As we saw, the shot was going in the net, but Axelsen has had read that one so easily. Had it come over, it would have been a nice straight block and not really on the pressure the tanks, is it? Reflector from the net court. Taking no chances, Rick Tankerson on the last kill, going straight down the court. Yeah, perfection. Don't need to go close to the lines on shots like this. That's a much better angle. We saw it was much closer to the sideline from Popov. This time, Axelsson was in a full stretch. And yet, all in vain, did not manage to get it back. But what a performance it was from Ebit Axelsson at the Tokyo Olympics, winning in two straight games against Chen Long. at 21-12, that was a massive performance. And a tight shot from Axison. Despite all the good efforts from the young Frenchman, never really put Axelsen in trouble in that rally. And now trailing four points. 15-11. For Victor Axelsen. And uh, that's in. Landed well in. That back line. Put away completely wrong footing. Mr. Popov with that reverse half smash. A good lift from Axis and it was a tight spinning net shot. Look, too easy to anticipate. And here's the finish.
So France didn't take part in the Sudirman Cup in Finland. Oh, that's way in. Way, way in. Um, last week, but Denmark did. They got to the quarter-final and Rick Tankerson represented his country twice in the campaign. Uh, once in the group and then the quarter-final against uh, Xi Yuqi of China, where he won 21-17, 21-14. But uh, nevertheless, China went on to win the tie. And eventually, winners of the tournament last week. Control. Victor Axelsen chasing his opponent around on the court. Uh, one has to say it's a bit of a lesson here for young Christo Popov, but he's still got the years ahead of him. Many, many things to learn, and it will be interesting to see whether the French team can convert all these European Junior Championships into world beaters on the international scene when it comes to senior tournaments. I think that could be quite tricky, but let's hope that they can do it because they will be great for badminton with another good badminton nation from Europe. to control the front of the court, not to lift too much. But it is interesting, if Popov could only, let's say, play a spinning net shot on a spinning net shot, I think that would make a great difference to his game as well. See, that smash is just too easy for Axelsen to defend. Well inside the line, 
Here comes the smash. Look at that. He's not even having to move Axison. Just standing in his base position and not forced to move at all on that smash. And that's something Popov really have to work on in his game. to uh, the attack from Bupo. It's coming up here. That's one, that's the one I was alluding to. Sometimes you're forced to give away the initiative, but you must be comfortable in your defence. And when you look at the two players, it's easy to see that Axison is far more comfortable in his defence than his opponent. Oh, that's really well played. Awesome rush to the net there from Popov. That was really, really good. And that is some of the things that could perhaps shake it up a little bit for Vitaxison. That was a surprise attack. Play. Uh, and that's a wild one. Perhaps a sign of uh, running out of energy from Popov because that was a beautiful, really well played return. And here setting it up nicely, but that one was a bit, uh, a little bit crazy in my book. He had the control, but perhaps running out of energy. I think uh, asking for the doctor, I'm not sure, but no, let's see. Here yeah, we've got the uh, referee on court.
And uh, we have to call this a medical timeout. Perhaps uh, Popov has grazed his finger a bit. Uh, perhaps on this one. Straight after the Olympics, Big Tax, listen, he announced that he was moving away from Denmark and residing in Dubai and setting up his own training setup in Dubai. And uh, I think okay. some Danish fans got a little bit disappointed when they heard the news. But nevertheless, as we can see here, very, very popular. Great support from the crowd. Forcing the error. Excellent taking the chance. Again, playing with lots of patience, waiting for his chance. Popov survived this one. But look at that, just keep pushing and punching the clears towards the back line of Popov. And he looks in total control with Taxson, physically on top. Look at this one, it was a tired few steps from Popov. Reached the net very late. I think uh, the target for Axis and was actually not trying to finish the rally too soon, but keep it going and making sure that his opponent is suffering physically. And back level, six all, since the medical timeout. Mr. Popov has done really well. Good pressure from Axis and though. Wanted to, to drive that cross-court defence from Popov. Yeah, this is the one. And once again we see Axis in, in complete balance and not in trouble to get cross-court at all.
And it's way, way in. Not even close. And these are the small tell signs of fatigue. Christo Popov. He's not only playing this match as we've seen earlier, he's also going to compete in the fifth and final match in the men's doubles, the first men's doubles with his brother. disguise down the center of the court from Popov. Wonderful technique. Still hanging in there. Look at this, that's a nice brush, really well played. Catching Axison a little bit on the wrong side. And once again, doing the same shot, just this time from, from the forehand side. That reverse, try to have a look at the follow-up, that reverse there, that's a beautiful shot. Very nice indeed. And just one point in it. into the mid-game interval with a lead of 11-9. That's a spirited performance here from Crystal Popov. Working ever so hard. Yeah, well spotted, just out.
Paul Boss really setting the pace here. Going as fast as he can. Played with much better angle, forcing the arrow. Here, very very sharp. But look at the look at the angle. I'm not convinced that uh, Paul Pop was not rolling over that angle. Perhaps just a little bit. It looked a little bit dangerous. Once again, once again we see these brushes towards the centre of the court, whether it's from the forehand side or the backhand side, it's really working well for Popov. Look at that one again, completely catching Axis and off guard. And that one was wide of the side line. Popov fighting for dear life in this match. Once again, Axis and this is looking at the service judge, waiting for a reaction, but it didn't come. Good defence, very strong defence from Popov. Survived the onslaught from Axison. He's so much under pressure in terms of pace. And this one is pushed long on the back line. Axison complaining, you think that the shot touched this one here, touched this T-shirt of Popov, but I am not sure, I actually think the umpire is totally correct on that one, which means there's just a point in it at now, 14-15. Very, very good defensive skills from Kristen Popov. Suddenly, the five-point gap is closed again. Axis in 15-10 up, and now it's 15 more. There is a little bit of insecurity creeping into the game of Axis. And tough to say yet, but uh, well, let's see. Him for not trying Crisco Popov once again on the floor. 
wonderful angle there from Axis and with his slides from his forehand side. If Atkinson is not trying to go a little bit faster now and trying to finish this match before it's getting too tight in this second game. Popper not wanting to lift, keep every shot in a downwards direction. Popov at the net, forcing some short lifts from uh, Victor Axison. And then she capitalised on it, but it was a bit of a mistake from Axison on the last one. Can Popov close the gap one more time? 16 18 down. Didn't like the drive serve got on the defence straight from the beginning of that valley. To look at the lunge, this one here got that very late. Crystal Popov. But 
the legs look very, very tired. And nevertheless, managed to play a beautiful spinning net shot, forcing the short lift. And this is the lift, cross court smash to the forehand side of Axelsen, which I think is a clever choice because every time Popov has gone down the backhand side of Victor Axelsen, it's coming back. Where on the forehand side we have seen more mistakes. Here we saw his brother, Toma Junior Popov, supporting. Again, this clipping the top of the tape and it's 19 all. So, will it be game point or match point? Yeah, look at the grits, really, really in it. Christoph Popov played a wonderful second game here against the Olympic champion. Again, forcing the Olympic champion into a defensive situation. And this time we again see the angle and the cross court going into the forehand of Axelsen. Forcing game point 20, game point at 19 in favour of the 19 year old Frenchman Chris Stolkopov. Short lift, attack to the forehand. Yeah. In. Left it on purpose, Crystal Popov on the back line, hoping it would go along. And it stayed in. Extra points required, 20 all. And second game point. Christopher can he convert on this one? That would be a major surprise. And he takes this a second game. Look at the celebration. Look at that expression on his face. Taking this a second game, 22-20. And this one just top of the tape. Not enough pace on it. Look at that, very close. And look at the celebration from the young man, forcing a third and final game. I fear he might be a little bit too tired to really make an impact here in the third game. But nevertheless, I think it's a fantastic performance. Ich 
защото той се знае какво му забави шлитъл на нигърта, той е като машина, няма друг какво се няма друг. В момента, в който се твърдаш, да беше шлитъл, тогава той ти се умедава и тогава той ще търси решение и перото ще излезе отзад. Тук е And uh, Christo Kovov have to wear this same colour shirt as what the umpire rightly points out. So got to change his t-shirt once again and notes made by Kennedy Onison. But what an interesting match here between these two players. And here we see the big smash from Maxison. Is that a sign of insecurity, sign of loss of a little bit of confidence? It will be very, very interesting to see. This time it was a bit too loose. And Popov had the chance. seen that uh, when Axison is under pressure his serving is sort of uh, letting him down and uh, was just scraping every single shot back but that looked extremely tired. That last lunge by Popov. The lactic acid is just building up in his legs.
good power smash from Axis and setting up a three point gap. Well, that was the same in the second game. Also a 6 3 up, and it is 6 all. After the mid ball timeout from Popov. Uh, once again, over committing completely, Christoph Popov. Axison has seen it and played towards the back line. But look at the look at that, completely caught. That is over committing a bit too much. change of tactics from Popov rather than playing his shot downwards he chose to go for an attacking flat clear inviting Axison to attack him but look at that beautiful cross defensive shot so definitely played the purpose once again the drive serve And that is called long on the back line. Wide of the sideline. And once again, Popov is back in the match. Just a point behind 6-7. Clever, he will put pressure on that serve. Oh, he was staying back. Yeah, good attack from Axison. Keeping his straight smashing, not opening up cross court. That's what I meant when I said it earlier. Attack that, serve, be strong on your return. Put some pressure on it and Axison might get insecure. That's a wonderful lift from Axis and they clipped the top of the tape. And again, we see the lactic acid just building up in the legs of Popov. I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting close to a cramp. Pressure now, the pace. I think the cramp is coming here. I think this is set for the end of Christo Popov in this match.
the end of Christo Popov. Axis really just need to keep it tight. Keep the rallies going. And Popov would uh, take many, many, many chances. Look at this one as well. Yeah, this is game over. As I said earlier, when uh, Popov won the second game, yeah, there's a worried man, the coach, the dad behind the court. But I was alluding to the fact that uh, Popov spent a lot of energy on winning that second game. Of course, he had no choice but to do so. But he's just 19 years of age, you still need to build up some more strength. And now it looks like one way traffic, 15-7. Be surprised if we see Christo Popov back on court in the last match in the men's doubles with his brother against Kim Astrup and Anas Rasmussen because this definitely doesn't look good. I'm not sure he can recover. Got nothing left. And now just three points away from taking this opening match and make it 1 0 in favour of Denmark against France. has arrived 20 match point eight fantastic performance by Christo Popov but one has to say he is completely and utterly gone his legs is gone and they have it little chat the two players but surely we will not see Christo Popov in the men's doubles in the last match. I, I cannot see that happening, but of course we will see. But changing t-shirts, that's a very nice gesture from the two players. So, 
Victor Axelsen is winning this opening match in Thomas Boktai Group B. 21-13-2022 and then 21-8. Seed on the match point. And here we've got the confirmation 21 13, 20 22, 21 8 in a little over one hour of play. And the next match coming up is the second men's singles is Anna Zantensen, the World Tour final champion and also a silver medalist from the World Championship in 2019 up against Arno Merkel of France. Wonderful scenery here from uh, Aarhus, Denmark with uh, the football pitch, the stadium we're in here, the race course on the right and of course overlooking the sea. And we're here inside the stadium.